JBN, we keep you informed. Three Jamaicans on drug charges in Cayman plead guilty. Three Jamaicans arrested in Cayman last year following a drug bust entered guilty pleas in the Grand Court on Tuesday. Assad Walker, Fitzroy Otti, and Owen Reed were seen throwing packages off a canoe in March 2018. The police seized the packages, which contained more than 300 pounds of ganja, 101 grams of cocaine, 49 grams of ecstasy, a handgun, and 49 rounds of ammunition. The Jamaicans said they were paid to transport the drugs from Jamaica to Cayman, and when they arrived at the departure location, the boat was already loaded. While they suspected the packages contained ganja, they denied ever knowing the other items were included in the packages. Police charged taxi driver, who allegedly threatened Cuthbert Flynn with a knife. The taxi driver, who allegedly threatened St. Andrew West Rural Member of Parliament and celebrated Olympian Juliet Cuthbert Flynn with a knife, has been charged with assault at common law. LaRue Spencer, 34, was served with a summons at the Portmore Police Station on September 17, the St. Catherine South Police have confirmed. He is scheduled to appear in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on Tuesday. Cuthbert Flynn said that she was informed by the police that Spencer had been charged and said she intended to be in court on Tuesday. I am not nervous at all, said the first-time lawmaker, who admitted that she was traumatized by the incident which allegedly occurred in Portmore St. Catherine late last month. Cuthbert Flynn said she was happy the police were able to track down Spencer because too many times you hear of people out there doing things and nothing happens. And people just say, hey, I can do this and nothing will happen, she said. We cannot continue to have a lawless society. We have to show people that we are serious about crime. Cuthbert Flynn recounted during an interview last month of a taxi driver without any provocation used his car to block the roadway before charging towards her vehicle with a kitchen knife that was about six inches long. The incident was witnessed by her three-year-old daughter, she said. It was terrifying. I was hysterical. My daughter kept asking, Mommy, why are you crying? Because I was bawling in the car, the St. Andrew West Rural MP said. She said that there was no indication what triggered the driver's rage. Urgent river training needed in St. Thomas. Councillor of the C4th Division in St. Thomas, Joan Spencer, is raising concern about what she has referred to as an urgent need for river training in her area. Spencer said that the Johnson River, which runs into the Morant River, has in the past and on numerous occasions overflowed its bank and has caused much displacement of residents as it completely inundated their homes. There's a lot of mining taking place in the area and the embankment needs to be protected. They mine there every day, and not much protective measures are in place. I was born in Seaforth, and I know how that river goes, and how bad it is when it overflows its bank, Spencer said. She added, We have seen where it has broken its banks some time ago, and destroyed many communities, and we don't want to repeat, and to prevent it, we need river training, we need to protect the bank. Spencer revealed that despite our constant reports and pleas to the relevant authorities, no action has been taken to address the issue. According to her, the right people need to come and look at what is taking place and come and make the recommendations. I've been putting it on the committee minutes report for a number of years and still no redress. I remember the last time the river broke its bank. We had a demonstration and I even nearly go to jail and still nothing happened. Residents of the district are also becoming fearful of what might happen later in the hurricane season. Adrian Williams, who lives in the area and admits to having been affected in the past, shared his fears. Down the river stay very bad. The last time local rain fall and it flood out the whole community. A good while now we not get no rain and now the sky black up. And we are afraid because we don't know when it's going to flood again. Williams admitted that although he lives in the vicinity of the river and is at risk, there are other community members who stand a greater chance of being displaced should it rain heavily. Them people, they're basically living at the river because the grind tear down. If it fall good, good, then them people up on the grind side don't have no home left. Right here now, me wouldn't mind to somebody come look on it to see what them can do to fix it because it's not still good at all, he said. ex cop gone missing. It's been almost a month since 23-year-old ex cop Adrian Brown has gone missing and his family is hoping that he'll be returned home. Claudette Bryan, Brown's mother, said that he went missing on August 28 when he left his Trelawney home to return a car. 
We have not seen or heard from him since. We have been calling him. His phone never ring. He just going straight to voicemail. We don't have no clue, no trace, nothing, she said. Brown said they reported him missing to the Falmouth police the following day. She said his disappearance has been extremely hard on her family. His sister sleep with him picture every night. He is our best friend. All he gives them when buying little brother for him birthday and sleep with everything, she said. I can't sleep, I can't heat, I can't even comb me here. I had him from I was 17 years old. Me grow him up without a father. I know I have to grow my grandchild not knowing where his father is. Brown left the police force in April under controversial circumstances. He was even arrested and was to face the courts next week in relation to a matter involving the botch purchase of a car. But Brian is adamant that her son is innocent and was not a corrupt cop. Please, may I beg you know, if you may not trouble with anybody that we don't know anything about, bring him home. Before you kill him, bring him home to him family. He can be worked out. I pray every day that he'll be returned home, she said. The Aero 1 police are asking anyone, knowing Brown's whereabouts, to call the Falmouth police at 876-954-3222. Trust issues in society mount a challenge to Crime Stop's efforts. Despite giving Crime Stop Jamaica CSJ hundreds of tips per year, many Jamaicans are still unwilling to step forward to ensure that those tips materialize into convictions. Since the start of the year, CSJ has received 723 tips with a success rate of 1 in 6. CSJ chairperson Sandra Glasgow said that despite the organization recording tremendous success over the years, a culture of fear is still hindering persons from coming forward with information. We have got thousands of tips over 30 years of existence. And when I see reports in the USA about snitches, it's an unfortunate aspect of our culture. Glasgow said, but we can't get away from the fact that it exists and people are afraid to share information. We have a very low trust society. The studies have shown that and that I think is at the heart of it. So Crime Stop continues to appeal to citizens and we have lots of channels to try to get people to convince them that crime affects everybody and that they should tell and that nobody has ever been compromised and you can get money from it, she added. CSJ manager Prudence Gentles added that while the organizations received tips, the difficulty sometimes lies in converting that information into strong leads. People know who these criminals are, but it's wanting to say, I know that it is John Brown, but how can the police convert that into an arrest and charge? They have to have evidence, and people have to be willing to come forward, and that's another part of the bigger problem, said Gentles. Director of CSJ, Brian Schmid, said another important factor is the nature of the neighborhoods and communities in which people live. For instance, someone might want to walk into a police station and to give the information, but if you live in Community X and there's an incident in Community X, that's the police station you need to report to, and the mere fact that you're walking there and you have not had an incident against you personally, it has raised a flag to people. So there's more to people's reticence than just what we'd like to think, and that's a very real thing, said Schmidt. Assistant Commissioner of Police, MacArthur Sutherland, who was also one of the guests at the forum, said that despite the fact that it is often said that people don't trust the police, the public and the police do share a good relationship, and there are persons who do trust and communicate with them. Parents shocked as Merle Grove High accused of collecting biometric data from pupils. Yet another corporate area-based school has found itself embroiled in controversy, this time for allegedly collecting fingerprints from students. Merle Grove High School is reported to have begun collecting the biometric data from students during its orientation exercise at the start of the new academic year as part of a new attendance record-keeping system. So they started with grade 7, and we thought because we are in sixth form that we didn't have to do it. We thought they were just starting with grade 7 since they are the new batch. But they did every single grade straight up to 6th form, as 6th form students said on Friday. The student who spoke to her team and didn't want to be named said that her fingerprints were taken last week. It was done in the teacher's lounge. Two people from a security company came and they had a computer with her names on it and the machine where we should put her finger. I placed my finger there about two or three times and recorded it or scanned it, she said. Other students shared similar accounts when a visit was made to the 95-year-old girls' school, which is located on Constance Spring Road in St. Andrew. 
The student's mother, who only found out about the exercise after the biometric data had been collected, was appalled. I feel very distressed and disrespected because something as important as this, and you know that biometric data has been in the headlines. The school went ahead, did this, and never said anything. There was no letter. When the school wants to get in touch with me, they do. I get emails, I get phone calls. I got nothing this time, said the mother, who also did not want to be named. The Reverend Anthony White, chairman of the school board, said that he was unaware of any such system at the St. Andrew-based institution. We had a bad reading device that persons were using to get students to sign. No fingerprint device, he said. There's no fingerprint device at the school for the student to sign in or anything like that. It is understood that teachers currently use a card to sign in for work. Principal Dr. Marjorie Fullerton could not be reached for a comment. The development comes as discussions rage on about the constitutionality of collecting biometric data, including fingerprints, from individuals who have not been implicated in a criminal matter. It was revealed last week that Mona High School in St. Andrew had implemented a biometric system for teachers to sign in on arrival at work. Principal Kevin Jones said that it was instituted to combat dishonesty among some teachers who were falsifying their attendance records. On Tuesday, Carl Samuda, Minister Without Portfolio, in the Ministry of Education, instructed that the practice of collecting fingerprints from teachers in public schools must cease. It is not clear if this also applies to students of public schools. It could not also be ascertained whether the administration had made efforts to get feedback or permission from parents before collecting the students' fingerprints. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.